Will the coronavirus cause a housing crash similar to that in 2008? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Angela Duong with Coldwell Banker 2 Guy Realtors and MadHomeDutah.com. And if this is your first time to our channel, please go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. So will the coronavirus cause a housing crash similar to 2008? With the uncertainty about the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, and the validity in the stock market, some are concerned we may be headed for another housing crash similar to the one we experienced back in 2008. Allie Wolf, Director of Economic Research at a real estate consulting firm Myers Research, addressed this point in a recent interview. She said, with people having PTSD from the last time, they're still afraid of buying at the wrong time. The current real estate market that we are in is nothing like that of 2008. Today, I would like to share with you five visuals that show the dramatic differences. Number one, Mortgage standards are nothing like they were back then. It was extremely easy to get a mortgage during the housing bubble. However, it is tough to qualify these days. Taking a look at this graph, the Mortgage Bankers Association releases a Mortgage Credit Availability Index, which is a summary measure which indicates the availability of mortgage credit at a point in time. The higher the index, the easier it is to get a mortgage. As you can see, the index skyrocketed during the housing bubble. And you can see that currently the index shows that getting a mortgage is even more difficult than it was before the bubble. Number two, prices are not soaring out of control. In this graph, this shows you the annual house appreciation over the past six years compared to the six years leading up to the height of the housing bubble. Price appreciation has been strong recently but it is nowhere near the rise in prices before the crash. You can see quite a difference between the two periods. Normal appreciation is 3.6%. So these recent years are appreciating higher than the historic norm, but nowhere near as high as it did in the early 2000s. Three, we don't have a surplus of homes on the market. We have a shortage. The month's supply of inventory needed to sustain a normal real estate market is approximately six months. Anything more is an overabundance and will cause prices to depreciate. Anything less than that is a shortage and will lead to continued appreciation. As you can see in this graph, there were too many homes for sale in 2007, and that caused prices to fall. Today, there is a shortage of inventory, which is causing an acceleration in home values. Four, houses became too expensive to buy. The affordability formula has three components, the price of the home, the wages earned by the purchaser, and the mortgage rate available at the time. 14 years ago, prices were high, wages were low, and mortgage rates were over 6%. Today, prices are still high. However, wages have increased and the mortgage rate is about 3.5%. That means the average family pays less of their monthly income toward their mortgage payment than they did back then. Here's a graph showing the percent of median income needed to purchase a median priced home compared from 2006 to today. Number five, people are equity rich, not tapped out. In the run up to the housing bubble, homeowners were using their homes as a personal ATM machine. Many withdrew their equity once it built up and soon learned their lesson in the process. Today, prices have risen nicely over the last few years, which has led to over 50% of the country having greater than 50% equity but this time, homeowners have not been tapping into it like they did last time. Here is a table comparing the equity withdrawal over the last three years compared to 2005, 2006, and 2007. Homeowners have cashed out over $500 billion less than before. During the crash, home values began to fall and sellers found themselves in a negative equity situation, meaning their mortgage was greater than the value of their home. Some decided to walk away from their homes and that led to a rash of distressed property listings of foreclosures and short sales. These ended up being sold at huge discounts, which lowered the value of the other homes in the area. That just can't happen today. If you're concerned that today's happenings will create a housing crash like last time, take a look over those charts and graphs again to help alleviate your fears. And if you're looking to buy or sell a home during this time, 
Please protect yourself and ensure that you are taking the precautions suggested to protect you and others against the coronavirus. I hope that you found this information useful and that you will share with your friends that you think might be a benefit of the information. Again, I'm Angela Duong at Coldwell Banker Tuga Realtors and MadHomeJutah.com. And again, if you haven't, please click the subscribe button down below and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. See you on the next one.